Very basic question, Tom, is what's the difference between registered and unregistered land? Well, essentially, land can't be sold to someone without being registered. So uh, with off-the-plan uh, developments, it's a large block of land which is being split up into lots. And whether the lots are freehold lots that uh, a house is built on and then the house is sold, or whether it's a block of land on which a unit development is built and it's um, strata titled, uh, the land doesn't become registered until until the plan is registered with the titles office. So you've got two very distinct concepts of registered land where the contract is, it, it describes the land as, um, as it's described on the, on the state government's title registry. Whereas unregistered land can only be described as the, as the, the parcel that will, um, of which the property being purchased will eventually form part. And so the contract will provide for registration taking place in the future and then at that point settlement can take place. So it's, it's future property, I guess. Unregistered land is future property. Registered land is property that's here and now. So in, in a lot of those unregistered blocks, there's, there's always a clause in there that allows for uh, minor changes to the land. So the size, you know, there's maybe less than 5% of that. There's a bit of variation that, that can occur there. What does that mean? Um, well, sometimes between the contract being signed and the, and the project being constructed, there's a need for small design changes. So you may find that there is a lift well that's in a different place than was disclosed to the buyer in the original plans. There might be the need for uh, more or fewer car parking spaces, an extra broom cupboard over here. The, the manager's um, reception desk may be, may be placed somewhere differently. These are all minor changes that you need to allow a developer the right to, to tinker around the edges. Otherwise, buyers would walk away for trivial reasons. And it's not really fair, I guess, for a buyer to be able to walk away if there is a tiny change that doesn't at all affect the buyer. Then at the other, the other end of the spectrum, if there is a major change that does affect the buyer, that's where the buyer needs to be protected in the contract. So most contracts will provide that if there is a change in area of um, greater than a certain percentage that is a, a major enough change that would enable a buyer to walk away. I mean, if you're signing up to buy a unit that's a certain size and it turns out that it's going to be 20 or 30 percent smaller, uh, it's not fair to require you to proceed unless you want to go ahead of course and so the contract will allow for that but uh, it, it does come into play when you're reviewing a contract. You look for the ability of the seller to vary the property without getting the buyer's consent. And the seller has to advise you of that as well, don't they, if there is a significant change. I mean, I remember uh, a property I bought where you're acting for me where the sewer line had to be changed and instead of at the back of the property, went down the side of the property, which had a significant impact on the design of the house. And so, yeah, so I was able to then sit down with you, look at that, make, make a decision, go back, renegotiate the price and, that I was happy with to be able to then proceed with the purchase. Yeah, the seller the seller is required to, to disclose that sort of information to the buyer. And if they don't, the buyer will have rights.